Look, I grew up bumping Lecrae and Jafia life. Now both of them know who I am, man. If that isn't God's work, I'm not sure what is Cause when I was a kid, I would sit in my room And assume that to do what they doing was not even worth my attention So I didn't mention it back to my friends And that I get a vision of ended up making a living off spitting Cause I knew I'd come off fucking Vincent What a dumb decision, I was worried about another one's opinion Under what condition has that ever ended up with someone benefiting Never in existence So I finally just did it And now looking back on it, I think my dream as a kid was a premonition Homie, this my interest, if you win the tennis, better be defensive I got villains wishing ill intentions with the killer distance Feeling bold and feeling clips with Ammunition, their new mission isn't born on nothing short of some jealousy Mortals are bored of the Lord and my pedigree I've been adopted by God and the force of his moral support is way more than 11 need So i just been working way harder than demons like Sean Don Like the kid getting called on in a class when he didn't put his hand up But he really knew the answer all along I ain't looking for a pat on the back, matter of fact I would rather be the one that everybody too intimidated to approach Cause I body anybody innovated with the flows, look They that I fall off the same one that Lucifer stops deceiving All the apostles, they stop believing It's never gonna happen, I'm on top like apostrophes And I'm not Facetious when I say that I'm a better rapper than the ones they pick it for the list at double XL. So I'm gonna excel when they can't stop me long as God is leading. Nah, it's all I believe in, regardless of season. I put my hopes in the prayers and I'm leaving the rest of it all up to Jesus. If I get named as a freshman, then I'll be conflicted for obvious reasons. Cause it might be weird to be part of a class I honestly ought to be teaching. Yo, what up, everybody? This is Mr. Rell, and this is the Mr. Rell Show. This is season two, episode six. Today, I got a personal friend of mine. Goes by the name of Alcott. What's up, bro? What up? How's it going? I'm great, friend. I'm amazing. This is going to be super fun. Uh, we should have done this a long time ago, uh, but we can dive right into it. So, super easy question. How'd you become a Christian? Go. <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, I, I definitely grew up like in a Christian home. Um, but it was when I was like 10 years old, when I first discovered like Lecrae's music actually, to where I actually started to question like, what is, what does it mean to be a Christian? Um, and so I would say it wasn't until I was like 11 or 12 that like, I really like understood what Christianity was Mm and, um, and really like gave my life to Christ at that point. Um, but I, yeah, I, I grew up in a home of Christian people. And so I did spend my whole life being like, I'm Christian, but, right. um, but yeah, it was, it was like Lecrae was and his music was a huge part of what made me like, just think about what it really means to be Christian. And that's sort of uh, a big part of just my, my faith journey. So that's, so that's dope. Cause I'm like about the exact opposite. I grew up, in the church, knew nothing about Christian music, Christian hip hop, anything, found it way later. So for you, the music helped you. So how did you find the music, if that makes sense? Uh, so I uh, I always loved, like I was always like infatuated with hip hop music, but my, uh, my mom was like pretty strict about what I could listen to. So okay. like, Uh, Most of it, like, I was just, like, not allowed to listen to. And so one time we were in, like, the Lifeway Christian bookstore. And uh, I remember just sort of, like, wandering around in there and stumbling onto the music section. And, like, up front was, like, Lecrae's Rehab. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is is this? Like, I didn't even know that, like, Christians made hip-hop music. Right. Um, And so I just like bought that cd to try it out and i was like oh like this is like really good right and so um yeah i mean that's and then it was it was a wrap after that i listened to like his whole i got his whole catalog at that point that's super dope so you kind of just stumbled upon it and then what about like the lyrics or the music kind of made you think because you said you were always around christians but the music somehow like kind of made you 
dig deeper in it, which is kind of like what a lot of us try to do in Christian hip hop. It's like, yo, maybe someone will hear it and it'll help them in their journey. So like, what about Lecrae's music kind of did that for you? Um, I mean, I don't know if I would say it was anything like specific that he said. I think it was just the fact that it, this was a person who I, I looked up to so much and the fact that it was, you know, at the forefront of what he was doing just made me think, oh, maybe this is something I should be taking more seriously. Um, so, yeah. So what, backtracking a little bit, what got you into hip hop? Like, cause so like me, I same as you, I wasn't allowed to listen to it. And anything I was, like I used to listen to uh, Bow Wow and Lil Romeo cause they were like clean for the same. Yeah. Right. So eventually, Smith. facts. So like, what was it about hip hop in general that I don't, I don't know if you listen to any other type of music growing up, but like what, what, what about hip hop was like, this is, I'm into this. Well, when I was like really little, I used to always want to be a writer, like an author. Um, and I always had just like this natural, like ability to like spell word. Like I was like a crazy good speller from really? like a young age. My dad used to like ask me, you know, spell these long words and I could <laughs> do it. So like, I just always have had this like natural incl inclination just to words in general. Like I'm fascinated by just the idea of it all. And so obviously like hip hop is a lot more lyrically focused. And um, so just the, I think as soon as I heard it, it was just like the way that they were putting the words together was something that made me just want to like dive in deeper and just like, figure out what was going on like i remember i mean when i wasn't really allowed to listen to much of it it'd be like whatever like feature verse was on the popular songs mm -hmm. and like ti's verse on um that jt song my love or whatever yeah. like i used to like memorize that or like chameleonaire's verse on uh that sierra song from right. a long time ago like so it was just yeah the the way that they would put the words together like I wanted to just like study that which I think is why I'm like into the super lyrical stuff too because yeah. that's just like what fascinates me definitely same because so I before I ever wanted to dabble with rapping I was into poetry um and there's always the joke like oh rappers are poets but like not really but it's like yeah really technically yeah like at least you should be um there's a lot that goes into it I literally write my raps like poems like I usually type them out in like stanzas like for like I've always kind of loved poetry that way um and that's why I love Kendrick so much because I could like dissect and like literally read out his lyrics and find something new in them each time so what took you from I'm a fan of this to yo I want to actually do this like and not just do it like oh I might write one song like I want to actually like be a rapper Yo, 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 it's your boy YJO with Enoch Flow Records, letting you know if you need beats, engineering, graphic design, website creation, Enoch Flow is the way to go. I'm going to tell you why. Why, why, why. Beats and engineering. All beats are produced by yours truly, exclusively, with no leases. And I'll even throw engineering in there for you. Graphic design and website creation. Bring your next single EP or album artwork to life with DC Graphics led by Damian Clinton, best graphic designer in the business. That's no cap. Get all these services and more only at Enoch Flow Records. Peace. Yeah, no, I think like, it's hard to, for me to pick like an exact like moment because mm -hmm. I think it was sort of a long process for me. Um, Cause I, again, like I always knew that I wanted to write. Right. Um, but uh, I'm trying to think like when I f wrote like my first rap, I was probably like 10 or 11. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got to high school, my friends and I just like decided to like make these diss tracks about <laughs> girls in our grade who were blowing us off. <laughs> um, and we like ended up making a habit out of that. Like we, it was like every other weekend we're making, like we probably have like a full mixtape worth That's of songs hilarious. from um and of course they were terrible right <laughs> um but uh like they were always telling me like yo you're like better than like the rest of us like you're like not bad you're like good <laughs> um, and i always sort of like 
brush that off though um just because it felt like it just felt like something that i just couldn't do like it just right. felt impossible um but then it was something that i just couldn't get out of my head though so it wasn't until i got to college that i was like okay well let me like actually try to make a song um and i just you know i kept practicing and then when i started getting like people in sort of like the industry or people i looked up to telling me like I'm like okay at this. Right. Then I was like, all right, well now I like I want to be a rapper. But like yeah. it, it was always it was always in me, I think. But it wasn't until I got to college that I, it became like a feasible option in my mind. Got you. Yeah, it is very. Um, we talk about cosigns and kind of like just getting that. They say they're like signs from God. Like people were talking about do music, and sometimes it's not meant for you to do it. But if it is, yeah. you'll know. And OB talked about this like a couple of weeks ago, like doors will open, there'll be signs. So it's like example of that for me, literally I was in the period where I was like, I graduated from college. I was like, I'm gonna give myself one year post-graduation to try to get some traction with this music and I'll reevaluate and maybe I shouldn't do this. And within that year, towards the end of it, I won that KJ contest. And for me, that was like a sign. Cause it was like, like 80 people did this um he's like an og in the space he talks about how he couldn't choose between my verse and another guy's verse that i thought was amazing um and so like to me that was a moment where i was like this is this is god telling me like i'm kind of not necessarily like i'm gonna blow up doing this but it's like doors are opening so it's not like you're completely trash there's nothing you know you have no uh you have no reason to be in this space you know and then, of course, you won a KJ contest, too, which is how we even know each other. I did, yeah. Did you think you had a good chance of winning? Was it just something that you were like, let me just throw a verse and see what happens for that specific contest? Yeah, I mean, what was weird about that one is, like, you know, most rap contests are, like, people post, like, their entries on Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, whereas his was just, like, you just, like, send you send them an email of the MP3 right. and see what happens. Uh, and so there was no way for me to gauge like how many people are entering, Ooh. like how dope are the other entries. Like, so I, I honestly, I had no idea. I did it because I, um, I had recently met Poetics and we had kind of become friends and he, he was like the guy who produced the contest beat. So I was like, all right, well maybe that'll like give me like a bit of an edge. Sure. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I mean, hopefully that's not why I won, but, <laughs> but yeah, so I just, I entered it, um, mostly because of Poetics. Mm -hmm. So we'll circle back to the contest for sure. But one, I think this is one of the tougher questions on here, but what is it like? And I asked Coop this too on like the first or second episode of the show. What's it like being a white rapper? <laughs> um, just knowing that it kind of comes with those extra. It's kind of like being a white rapper. I got to say this carefully. It, it's a, it gives you a glimpse of what it feels like to be like a minority, <laughs> if that makes sense. Cause you are definitely, it's kind of like a white basketball player now. It's like, okay, you're looked at like, there's not a lot of you and you kind of gotta be really good to make it. So like, do you ever find like there's any extra challenges or anything you got to tiptoe around or has it been something you've noticed? Um, Honestly, I don't think about it a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that um, I'm very much like, a believer in like the idea that you know white like white rappers are like a guest in mm -hmm. the in hip hop but so like because of that i think we have a responsibility to and i, I mean this goes for every rapper in my opinion right. but to just like study the game like no like no like know the roots and everything which i i mean i try to do uh, just cuz i love it but yeah i mean i don't really think about it a whole lot the only thing about it that annoys me um is uh, just getting compared to, to Eminem and NF all the time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it's literally only because I'm white. Like it's, you're it's taking my bullet no points, reason, bro. sir. You're taking my next question. Well, so here's the thing, right? It is unfair when white rappers always get compared to others. Like under that post, for the people that don't know, which is everybody, uh, someone today was like, "What or yesterday? What Christian hip hop artists are similar to NF?" Uh, when I said you. And then somebody else said KJ. I'm like, someone was like, how? <laughs> how? They're not anything. Exactly, bro. I teach. Like, no, they're like the opposite. Yeah, no, they're literally the opposite. Other than being, if he wasn't white, it wouldn't even be something someone would bring up. Yeah. I will say, I tease you about it 
I don't think that you are. I think you're a closer comparison to NF than like KJ, but that's just because of the oh, yeah. impression you rap with. But like, you don't rap on the same beats. You're definitely more lyrical. So like, you're not, you know, he's probably not a fair comparison, but you do have that aggression. Uh, why do you rap so angry, bro? What is that? What is that about? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to necessarily. I just like it. I think it's partly just because it's, this is competitive to me. Mm. Like, I mean, I'm coming for heads every time. Like, I mean, why not? Thanks. Thanks, bro. That's, <laughs> I think I said to you, you remind me of like, if Dexter was a rapper, like a serial killer <laughs> who killed <laughs> his raps. Um, so I don't think that you would say nf is like an influence or a inspiration or a, someone you compare yourself to but is it was eminem one and if not who would you say are people that influence like really influence the way you rap yeah well i mean i i will say props to nf because i mean not that i would consider him like a huge influence but mm -hmm. i mean i every time he gets brought up i feel like i sound like i'm hating on him i think he's right. dope um and his perception album like I ha I listened to that a ton like mm -hmm. when I was really like practicing and honing my craft so I'm sure like he has some influence on me no doubt um Eminem was definitely a big influence um but probably not like one of my major ones but mm -hmm. I mean uh, just like the way that he puts his rhymes together obviously is something that like I have spent a lot of time just like trying to like dissect and like just learn it um okay. but yeah in terms of like the artists who like really inspired me when I was getting into hip hop. Um, Joey Badass is a huge one. Um, I I remember finding his uh, his 1999 mixtape just like randomly. I, I used to be the guy who would just like go on that piff. Right. Yeah. Look at all the new releases. Yeah. And I just happened to happen to find him through that. And uh, that like so he was super inspiring for me. Logic um, was huge for me. Um, just the way that like his, the way he puts his cadences together is crazy. Um, and then Tech Nine was huge mm. for me too, um, for similar reasons. Also, his rhyme schemes are nuts. Same. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then obviously there's the Kendricks and Coles and dudes like that who are like inspiring to all of us. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are some of the main ones for sure. Speaking of tech, so we both love Tech Nine. I. Um... And one reason I feel like I ever had the ability to rap, because I used to be just a drummer. I never thought I'd be a rapper, but I used to practice rapping along to stuff so much. I think I built up the skill over time. Like I used to learn tech. I know Tech Nines versus off Worldwide Choppers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah, just same. being able to get them down was like, I'm phoning. That's, I think that's the only reason I even am decent at speed rap. There's nothing else that would have given me that ability other than just practicing versus all the time. Buster Rhymes, uh, and tech nine we've had thoughts we've had talks about speed rap what are your thoughts about do you ever feel like you get boxed in as like someone who only chops like i talked to chris noel about this and he's always like he likes to rap fast but he doesn't want to get put in that necessarily like tech nine box where it's like oh he's the speed rap guy but he doesn't ever actually like rap i'm not gonna say it doesn't make sense but it's like tech nine is different than kendrick in the sense that like you might not get a story at a tech nine, you might just get very fast rep, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't personally, I don't feel like I do it enough to <laughs> get boxed in. Right. Um, as that, but, um, but like, it's something that like, I enjoy like throwing into a verse sometimes. And like, it's something that I plan on continuing to do. Like right. I, I think when people hate on that, that's just stupid. Like. <laughs> it's it's just another like piece of an arsenal like so um but yeah i don't i don't feel like it's enough of a like gimmick for me that like i would get boxed in i mean right. maybe you disagree but i, no, I, I don't think i'd do it enough for that no i agree with you like i think chris probably does it the most out of and like canon you know um but i do yeah think, i i've been trying because i think when i first started rapping i did it a lot more because like logic and tech nine were huge for me, so I was almost like trying to only speed rap and I was eventually like, okay, I gotta, I can slow it down. I, people have told me they like my songs better when I slow it down. Um, but yeah, so, and of course, you chop whenever I make you, uh, which, <laughs> which I'm gonna do like 12 <laughs> more chop it ups and you're gonna be on all of them because somehow those are my most popular songs. So, um, well, I know why. Um, 
But uh, so hey, white kids like fast rap. They really do, and it. I mean, I'm not mad at it. Uh, so what are your thoughts? You're unique to me in the sense that you're in Christian hip hop, but it's very clear to me based on just talks we've had that you want to kind of transcend it, which I do too. But I feel like you almost have more of the. You kind of already started doing that. Like you have a song with futuristic. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are your thoughts on Christian hip hop and being boxed into that? Is it a goal of yours to be like, oh, I want to be in both spaces. I don't want to get boxes. I'm the Christian rapper. I can't ever work with mainstream people. What are your thoughts on all that? Hey, what's going on, everybody? B Plus here, back with another recap countdown video. Now, I know I've been on a bit of a hiatus, but I'm glad to be back. And I'm back with a dope project by AI The Anomaly, her debut project with God Over Money entitled Souls Acrylic. Now, this project has been out for about a week now. It has a very timeless sound to it, a lot of dope lyrics. And I'm sure that you guys are going to enjoy it. Now, if this is your first time around this channel, uh, number one, welcome. Number two, feel free to subscribe to the channel and also leave a thumbs up. And number three, here's what we do. We take a look at my five favorite bars, my four favorite beats, my three favorite tracks, my two favorite features, and I run everything out with one final recap. Now, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into my five favorite bars. Five bars. More follow, more bank, little dance, little sway, trade a chicken for the steak. Getting greedy with the play, go and tell me how it tastes. More you hunger for your fame, more you fiddle with your fate. Yeah, I see a lot of withering, Twitter tantrums, tit for tat and the tip of the fingers dancing. Tap dance with your fans. Oh. The voices at a high rate, get together just to migrate. High state. Many couples lose faith in the mind state. That's why we keep a circle round, got the ring gang. It's a whole other. I look into their eyes, I can see me in a daughter full of life, I can see me in her. My sonny got that fire, I can see me in her. Build your floor from my ceiling, I can see you in it. This labor transition. My ambition is rooted deep in the holy scriptures. My intent is to point them all to the crucifixion. Exposing lies and shine a light on the contradictions. He gave me light and with this life, I choose to live it true. Hey, I on the yay high, but flow by with the cross. Carry team like I'm AI. Yeah. No verse, son. Mommy bars in a booth. Get your work done. Now, this is definitely one of those projects where it's nearly impossible to pick out your favorite bar just because AI is just a very dope lyricist. We all know that if you're signed to God over money, that's one thing you have to have. You have to have a tight pin game. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, uh, I definitely don't want to be like a strictly CHH person. And right. for whatever reason, whenever that both thinks, thinks that that means like, you know, you don't want to like, you want to make like hedonistic music mm -hmm. as well as Christian music, which is right. of course not at all what it means. It just means that like, I want to work with any artist who I think is dope. Like mm -hmm. that, that's, I mean, my, my goal is to make dope. Like that's what I'm trying to do. Right. So if that means I'm going to do a song with futuristic, I'm going to do a song with futuristic. Mm -hmm. The song is still going to be clean yep. and I'm not going to, yeah. Like I'm just, I'm not going to put out a song that, is like antithetical to my faith mm -hmm. um because i mean i that's just not who i am like why why would i, I like i i am a christian i i follow jesus like there's there's no like question about that um but i'm i'm just gonna work with artists who i think are dope like i i want to let that's one of the things i do admire about nf like he mm -hmm. has a enormous Christian fan base and an enormous fan base outside of the space. Right. Obviously, his music is really not very Christian. Nope. <laughs> um, like I don't consider him a Christian rapper. Right. Um, but, but that's like sort of what I want to to be able to do. Like I want to appeal to to both audiences. Right. Which and I feel like we talk about how we joke about it, but it's a fact. Christian hip hop has this way of we kind of isolate ourselves, and it almost feels like. Christians rapping one it feels like Christian artists rapping just for other Christian artists and then it's just Christian artists rapping for only Christians and it's like literally preaching to the choir we should be trying to yeah. I trying to get on a song of someone who's mainstream and still talk my talk you know what I'm saying be good at what I'm doing but also like what Lecrae does basically where it's like oh people know he's the Christian but people also know he's talented you know He's not just exactly anything for a Christian. Like the whole point is to reach outside of us. So if you're only rapping for Rapzilla's audience, you know, you're not, I mean, it's not doing it. Yeah, we're not reaching anybody. Facts. Facts, bro. Um, 
a similarity we have is we're both big on contests. Well, I've since kind of retired, sort of. But we oh, both- Oh, no, come on. <laughs> between the you two say of us- that. You say that. I, I do, and then I find one I like. Um, exactly. But between us, we probably have like 20 contest wins slash final. Like, I think everything I've ever entered, I've at least been a, a finalist in or won. Um, and I know you've won a ton of them. What is it about contests for you that like draws you to them? Like for me, when I first started, it was a whole thing of like, okay, there's a lot of rappers. I feel like I'm talented, but no one's listening to me because I'm new. So let me just do every contest I find. And at least the good thing about contests is they have to hear you. Like they have to watch your entry. They can't skip it. That's true. So That's you're going to hear me rap. Um, and you're good. I mean, whether I win it or not, you you at least have you have to hear me and be like, who's this guy? Um, and then of course, once I won one and then two, I was like addicted and I was like, I have to win all of them. Um, <laughs> what are your thoughts on, why did you get in the contest? Um, well, like the first couple contests I entered, which were like, you know, four years ago, mm -hmm. uh, before I was any, I was trash. <laughs> um, it was at that time, it was just like, well, how can I blow up quick? Right. And it was like, well, maybe if I win this contest, which of course is now I realize it's not realistic at all. Right. <laughs> but, um, but that was my motivation initially. Um, but then as soon as I like got to a point where I realized like, oh, like now, like I actually know how to rap. Mm -hmm. Um, then, then it was about the competition. Cause like, I mean, I just, I enjoy rapping competitively. Like, I think that's a beautiful part of the art. Right. Um, and so that that was motivation it, i still i wasn't at the point like where i wanted to enter every contest like mm -hmm. it was mostly about like is this like something that i feel like is worth my effort right. um but but yeah i mean i i because i would get like if i lost a contest like i would just get in my feelings and like i'd quit rap for like a week <laughs> um and oh. so it it, it's not it's not healthy to like enter a bunch of contests and just rack up a ton of l's so thanks, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> well that's the funny thing though if you think about it from our perspective like some people have never won one and never will i've won enough for like a life you know what i'm saying like i've won enough of them like honestly that yeah. kj one was enough but I, I think i won some after that um but someone would have dreamed of winning that and then like getting to perform on the be on the album and you know what i'm saying so it's like exactly i would beat myself up and be like bro you've you've won a lot of them like you don't gotta win them all like you don't even like the song that you rapped on why do you want to win this um <laughs> yeah for real but it, it's definitely i think people forget hip-hop is I, i've been saying it's fun but competition friendly competition is fun uh exactly do it right i guess some people have not figured out how to do it right they just get mad but it's like yo this is a sport like and I, I don't know why people can't see rap the way we see basketball. Like we talk about Steph yeah. Curry. He's a Christian who plays basketball. He was, I don't know if you saw the game he played the other night. He was like super hype and emotional and no one's going to be like, oh, he's prideful and this isn't what it's. It's like, dude, he's playing a sport and rap is a sport just like that too. Um, we're all trying to be better than each other. But it's like in fun. Well, I'm not actually trying to kill you. You know that Steph is. You know Steph is talking trash out there too. Facts. Like all the <laughs> like, that's just part of it. Like mm -hmm. it's not. It's people gotta quit making it so serious. Facts. I take it so personal. Um, <laughs> last couple questions. So, do you have a specific goal for your music? Like, I typically say I make music for myself because it's cathartic it'd be cool to reach people but that's not necessarily my goal people are just going to necessarily like people are going to naturally relate because i'm a human and they're human um but i kind of make music for me do you have a specific goal for when you make a song or a project um i have an overall goal mm -hmm. which is basically i have a desire to do for somebody else what lecrae did for me and mm -hmm. that that like that doesn't necessarily have to mean that somebody like converts like because of my music or something. Right. But to just simply inspire somebody the way that he inspired me as a kid. Like, I mean, dude, I was, 
I was writing like Lecrae lyrics in my notebooks whenever I was bored in class. Right. I mean, to the dude like changed my life, I would say. And mm -hmm. so like I and in a positive way, obviously. And right. so I just I would love to be able to inspire somebody the way that he inspired me. I mean, that's 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 the ultimate motivation um, of of whether it be music or just any work that I end up doing. Right. Um, that's, yeah. That's noble. It's it's funny because like. Like I said, I always I always wrote as a way to, you know, be cathartic and to get emotions out. And then music became that. And I never really thought so now I have people that I definitely consider fans. Like I have people that I really think that they might kill for me. Like there are people that think I'm the <laughs> best rapper on the planet. And anytime they say something like that thing the other day where he was like, Oh, Mitch Durrell is the the best lyricist in CHH, and I'm like, Hey, I'm not going to argue with, I mean, you know, I don't feel yeah. that way, but I'm not going to, who am I to tell him he's wrong, you know? Um, and then if someone challenges that, they're like, no, it's Mitch. And I'm just like, ah, okay. Um, but it's like, I never could have foresaw, like, there would be people that would listen to just me getting my, you know, uh, doing what I do to make myself feel better and take it and relate to it so much. Um, so yeah, I do. I definitely think that now, I at least think about the impact I could potentially have with a song that I'm just writing up for me, how I can attack somebody else that's going through the same thing. Um, so very dope. Uh, <laughs> luckily, or hopefully this is almost over, but how has the pandemic affected you over the last year and a half now? Um, as a creative, as a student, which you've graduated now, but how did uh, 2020 and early 2021 treat you? Uh, well, as a student, it sucked <laughs> doing online Zoom classes is a horrible way to learn, but it is what it is. I got through it. Yep. Um, in terms of like art, I honestly think that it sort of helped me um, because it forced me to be in a space where I was like, what, like, what do I need to work on? Um, and what do I need to put a lot of my energy into to... Right help me grow and so what i ended up doing was uh learning to shoot videos with my brother mm -hmm. like we just uh we put a lot of time into just figuring out well like why we don't have anything else to do because right. it's a pandemic so like let's just figure out how to shoot videos and i think that that really upped my upped my game for sure right. like i mean that especially in those contests like mm -hmm. having a a good video in a contest is i mean i i say that it's crucial at this it, point yeah it definitely is i i'm trying to think i i used to not i just would have a graphic the since i'm basically it's a mixture of not having time another person and i'm just lazy but like i would at least put the lyrics because honestly for me the lyrics are always the thing that i'm striving to do the best at so i'm like yo they didn't catch that one flip or like these what so i'm just like let me put all right. the words under at least my contest um, and that has helped me, but no, I definitely, it makes sense why a video, cause at the end of the day, it's just whichever wows you the most is what you're gonna, uh, gonna choose. So it's like, if it's fire lyrics and a video, then yeah, <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna. Well, and, yeah. Especially if it's like a contest where there's like a thousand or so entries, yeah. like, and a bunch of them aren't going to have videos and they're like combing back through them to figure out okay which ones were good again like exactly. if you just have like a graphic just like everybody else gonna, they may yeah. just like scroll by even, even if they thought it was dope on first listen like they right. may just yeah they may just forget about it very that's, like, that's actually a really good point <laughs> um that's why i'm retired man I, i'm i've done my time nah i'm gonna do another back. one in three weeks <laughs> i was supposed to be taking a break <laughs> from making songs after my project. And it's been four weeks and I got a song with Selah coming out in next month. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Dude, I got his verse. I'm probably gonna send it to you once it's, it's about to get mixed, but dude. Yeah, I'm, send it to me. I'm gonna make like 12 more songs. Like I can't take a break. This is the four weeks is the longest break I've ever taken. And I probably won't take another break like that ever again. <laughs> Cause I just like it too much. Um, Why well, bros, uh, tell the people if you got anything coming up and how they can find it, how they can find you and your music, all that. Uh, well, I mean, I assume by the time this drops, my futuristic collab will already be out, but that's Thank dropping you. this Friday, May 21st. Uh, and then I'm following that up with a 
song with my homie Sean Wyckoff that's dropping June 4th. So that's two weeks yeah. from this Friday. Um, but yeah, and then and that's dropping on all platforms. Um, people can follow me on social media at Alcott Music. That's A-L-C-O-T-T Music. Um, and then on Twitter, I'm at Sam Alcott Music. And you're super active on Twitter, right? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you're getting there. Um, <laughs> that bro, I appreciate you taking the time, man. This was definitely fun. Honestly, I'll probably have you on here again. Also, we got to do more songs together. <laughs> and so, hey, I'm, I'm ready whenever. Um, dude, that's people love that song that we got with KJ. Like, I like it a lot. Um, everyone I've shown it to is like, yo, <laughs> this song is fire. Um, and I, th- I think it was dope too. It was a nice like circle, like everything came together moment because I was on his first project because I won a contest. You were on the second one because you won a contest and then we're both on a song with him. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't even know that you were going to be on it either. Like you, you when did? he sent it to me, it was just, he, he sent it to me, it was just his verse. Uh-huh. And then I sent him a verse and I was like, all right, well, well, and actually when he sent it to me, he had two verses on it. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so it was already three verses. So I had no idea that he was going to send it to you. Oh yeah. I had no, I was literally sitting on my couch and uh, he sent me just a file and was like, hey, would you get on this? And I was like, uh, yeah. And I clicked on it. I was like, first verse is you. I'm like, I know this guy. Um, and then I heard his voice and he, <laughs> I had already started writing my verse. And he was like, just so you know, I want like some chopping in there. I was like, you already know. Like I had already started writing it that way. So he knew yeah, exactly yeah. what to expect from me. Um, dude, I'll never forget. It was when I still recorded at a studio uh and i was like oh this i didn't really know kj that like i knew of him but i was like mad new to chh but i just knew he was a big deal so i was like yo i'm gonna enter this contest i've won like some smaller ones so i remember recording the verse and being like this is my best verse to date like this has got to where i remember being like please let me win this and i remember i was on my bed and poetics went live with kj and they were like we're actually gonna name two winners and i was like oh i'm definitely like i have a such a better chance i had no idea how many people entered and there were like 75 people entered and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and like the first person, it, I think it was Jody Jermaine and they played his verse and I was like- Yeah, he's fired. Is, yeah, I was like, this is crazy. I was like, the second verse, I, I don't know. Like if they tied with this, I don't know. And they're like in missed around. I remember I was like, oh my God. I was like jumping up and down on my bed. I was like, this is amazing. Um, so that was like the happiest moment for me. So then months later when he's like, uh, do you want to come out to Myrtle Beach? Which is in my state to perform it with me. I was like, I will be there. Um, Res is history, man. <laughs> He's like my favorite person. Yeah, no, I wish that I he he texted me uh, like you know soon after winning that contest because mm-hmm. he had a show uh, that was like four hours from me or something, mm-hmm. um, and I couldn't go because I had uh, a session with uh, with Ray Rock the next morning. Oh, wow. I was like, I don't think that I'd be able to make it back in time. Like- Dang, bro. That <laughs> it was a uh, it was something. People tease me. Q Flow in particular, they'd be like, "Nah, uh, KJ gave you that push. You're an industry plant." I'm like, "Bro, I earned it. <laughs> I wrapped my butt off. I earned it. I did. He didn't give it to me." I'm gonna start um, calling you that too. Don't, please don't. I hate it so much. <laughs> I low key get salty when he says that. I'm like, "If I if I'm NF to you, then you're then I'm an industry plant. plant. <laughs> yeah. I'm dead." All right, bro. I appreciate you being on here. Oh, I got to shout out Daryl once again for giving me this show because I love this show. Uh, it's almost been a full year of this. It actually, yeah, we're coming up on a full year of this show, which is crazy. Um, so shouts out, Daryl. Appreciate you. Shouts out to everybody watching. Tune in next time. Peace. So what guy shows I want to wait? Why don't Watching it go from no shield, no protector. If you send one, they gon' heat me. Yeah, he had smoke from salt and pepper. So it was. I was 15.